In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate an installation of Wingate 6 to show you how easy it is to install Wingate on your network. By the end of the tutorial, we will have set up a functioning internet router, a DNS service, and a DHCP service. We will assume that the computer on which Wingate will be installed has two network adapters, one that connects to the internet, and another that serves client computers on a local area network. The installation file for Wingate can be downloaded from www.wingate.com. Click on the download link under Wingate and get the latest version. If you're installing on Windows 7 or Vista, there will be a UAC prompt. Click Yes to let the installer run. Read the End User License Agreement and click I Agree. Select Configure this computer as the Wingate server. This step just confirms that we are installing a server. Then you can choose where you want to install Wingate. Click Next to use the default location. Wingate can synchronise its user database with the local Windows user database or an Active Directory. We're not going to use database syncing, so leave this option unchecked. The ENS driver provides Wingate with its routing, firewall and VPN functionality. Since we want Wingate to be an internet router, we need this to be installed. Enabling auto updates will prompt you when a newer version of Wingate is released. Note that you will still have to install the new versions manually. You are now prompted to activate a license. You can either enter a purchased license or request a trial. I'm going to request a free 30-day trial. Click on the Activate button. Click Next to activate over the internet. Then click Next again to request a free trial. We are now ready to install Wingate, so click Begin. If you are prompted to confirm that you want to install the Wingate driver, click the Install button. Wingate is now installed on the computer. Click Finish, then click OK to reboot the computer. Once the computer has rebooted, we can log into Wingate. Gatekeeper, which is the administration console for Wingate, can be opened from Start, All Programs, Wingate, Gatekeeper. Log in to Gatekeeper for the first time as administrator with no password. You will now be asked to create a new password for the administrator account. Wingate is ready to go at this point. All we do now is check that the network adapters have been detected by Wingate and are configured correctly. Go to the Network tab to view the network connections that Wingate has detected. We can see that the external adapter has an IP address and default gateway, and the internal adapter has an IP address but no gateway. Only adapters that connect to the internet should have a default gateway, so this is good. Usage indicates how Wingate treats an adapter. An external adapter's firewall is very strict by default, and services, such as the WWW proxy or the IMAP server, are not bound to external adapters automatically. This prevents unauthorised access to your network and services from the internet. Wingate determines an adapter's usage based on the IP address of that adapter. Private IP addresses are deemed to be internal, while public IP addresses are seen as external. In our case, we see that the external adapter has a private IP address, so we'll need to change its usage to external manually. Double click on the adapter, select an external untrusted network, and click OK. We do not recommend installing Wingate alongside any other security software as conflicts can occur. We also recommend that you disable the Windows firewall on the Wingate server. To disable the Windows firewall, go to the Control Panel, Administrative Tools, 
and run services. Find the Windows Firewall service and open its properties. Change the startup type to disabled and stop the service. Wingate is now ready to serve the local network. Let's turn on a client computer and test its internet connectivity. Here's my client computer. DHCP is enabled on this machine, so we'll have a quick look at what settings it has obtained. By opening a command prompt and entering the command ipconfig slash all, we see that DHCP is enabled and the DHCP server is the Wingate server. We have been assigned an IP address in the same range as the Wingate server's internal adapter and Wingate has set itself as the default gateway and DNS server. That means we are configured to connect through Wingate and should have working internet access. We can test this quickly by opening a web browser. That's working, so we're all connected. As you have seen, installing Wingate and configuring your clients is very fast and very easy. Visit www.wingate.com for more information.